Hello and welcome back to the workshop. In today's video I'm going to be making a Coventry die sleeve that will fit on the external diameter of my tailstock and will hold these Coventry dies so I can use them down the track. So you may remember a couple of weeks ago uh, I've got a customer called Wayne and he's got these Coventry die heads that I can have uh, use of. So Wayne's dropped me off some steel and we're going to make two of these sleeves, one for my Colchester and one for Wayne's lathe down the track. Now I've thrown the longest billet that I had in the Colchester and I just quickly OD turned and faced that just to get a good gripping surface uh, so it wouldn't pull out and hit me in the head. So today's operations are rather simple, uh, basic lathe operations such as facing, uh, centre drilling, drilling and boring. So at the moment I'm taking a probably about a 10 thou cut on the external diameter here in the OD and you can see the carbide is really giving a nice finish. And uh, unfortunately I hit it again and didn't take a deep enough cut and, and, and that dulled that beautiful finish but look I kept up on the size so I knew I could uh, get back to that, that surface finish later on in the video. So I'm just popping in now with the centre drill, I'm just centre drilling that hole. You can see that somebody has drilled this stock before. Uh, chasing it up with a half inch Sutton Tools high speed steel drill bit and this is a brand new drill bit and it literally cut like a hot knife going through butter. I was rather happy with that. I sped the footage up a little bit, not to bore you. And as deep as I could go. I then chased it up with a rather large 15 16 of an inch uh, old PNN high speed steel drill bit. Now I did sharpen it on the grinder, but you can see that I've got my, I may have my uh, height slightly out because I'm not pulling this wharf neatly from both flutes although both flutes are cutting and I'm just keeping it cool with some um, coolant, some hang surface coolant and that little coolant bottle's been working well I bought that from a local hardware supplier and it's a pump, a pressurised one I was sick of the other ones failing and here we are doing some internal boring now this is rather deep, I'm going about 125 millimetres deep that's roughly about 5 inches I believe you can see I'm going right up, nearly right up to the Dorian tool holder, but not touching, of course. Now, upon doing that, I fluffed the, fluffed the uh, ID size, and I was about 0.5 mil oversize. But that's OK, I had plenty of room on the, on the other side of the material, so I quickly flipped it around uh, in the, and put a four jaw chuck on, plopped it in, and you can see here now, I gave that drill another bit of a, a tickle on the grinder. It is starting to cut a bit better now. And I've come into that back side. I've roughly got about 50 millimetres of meat in there that I can meet the size that I need to, to meet. Now, this size was to hold the Coventry die. And I believe the Coventry dies are roughly all around about 38.1 of a millimetre. So I had enough meat here to hit that size. So you'll see here that I've put a dull gauge of my Colchester's Imperial. So I'm taking a half mil cut on the radius, which is one millimeter in the diameter. And you can see this steel's cutting rather well. I've got no idea what sort of steel it is. Uh, Wayne is into scrap metal and stuff like that. So these were just two pieces of billet that he pulled out of his backyard that was laying in the paddock. And uh, hey, it's free, so I'm not complaining. Right, I'm just checking up on that ID now. And as I was saying, the size that I needed to hit was 38.1. And I was quite happy with that. Okay, just adjusting the outside diameter now. And the size I'm trying to hit here is 63.5 millimeters on the OD. You can see carbide loves to cut and if you keep it loaded you always get a nice surface finish instead of 
scratching at it. Really, I probably should have dropped in some high-speed steel there. Probably would have got a better surface finish. I just didn't have enough load on that carbide tip. Surface finish isn't too bad, though. OK, we're going to part it off now. I've roughly marked out where I need it to go. And I'll be parting off under power auto feed in the X direction. Drop in there with a little bit of old uh, motor oil just to lubricate that a little bit. And off camera here, I quickly got a bit of metal and put inside my drill chuck uh, and place it up internally so when I cut through, the part would catch and wouldn't fall on the lathe and dent and dimmy, damage and anything. There we have it, the part is finished. All right, I'm just flipping that around now. I need to face it down to size, and the size I was going for is 125 millimeters. 120 millimeters, sorry. And I was right on the money. I was quite surprised, actually, how well I got it. I measured it before I put it back in and, and just faced it off. Just took 10 foul cut on each pass. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I need to expand that diameter to fit my Colchester tailstock, and it's rather big, it's 50.8 millimetres, which I believe is 2 inch. And I'm just boring that out, and I had to take a whisker cut in the end just to get it to fit. And here I am just breaking that sharp edge with my lathe file and popping into the deburring tool just to break the internal edge there and knock the lathe out of gear and as it's slowing down just hit it with that tool. Just going to take it out of the chuck now and just have a quick look at it. I will need to um, do some more operations on the milling machine. Now I was a little bit disappointed I was a fly, uh, uh, you know, a fly's hair under size and it wouldn't quite go on the tail stock, it was rather tight. So I took it over to the vice and true to my word as Humpty Dumpty Machine Company, I popped in there with a three, uh, this is a cylinder home, and just gave that a light home ever so slightly. I didn't want to pop it back into the lathe and take more meat off it because I know I'd go oversize. And you can see here, it fits like a finger in a glove. And if you don't get it straight on, it will not go on. Alright, okay, over into the mill now and using my probe and DRO finally. And what I'm doing here is just picking up on that datum edge on the X and then I'm going to find center by popping in on the back side and front side and splitting that measurement. So in the Y axis, I'll clear that. Going to do a little sneaky pop around now. Back to the front and back in we go. Now I kept the same Z height there, so I knew I should be right in this because I'd stayed in the same plane. And just going to split that now and pop back over to find the center. In with a spot drill, just to spot drill that hole. Then break through with a drill bit through the other side. So this is 6.25, I think, something like that. Or 6.75 mil drill bit, because I need to tap at 8 millimeter thread, 1.25 pitch, bit of oil. What I do here, I start the mill up on high speed, quickly turn it off and engage the quill into the job. And you see the tap pulls up, it doesn't break, and just finish it off by hand, just chase it up. Now a little bit disappointed, these Sutton taps don't have a little center point a hole on the end of them, so I'm not sure how they hold them in their tool and cutter grinders. Uh, in the old days, I always had like a little pinhole on the end that you could put a a tap chaser up the back side of it to keep it straight. I've flipped the part around in the vise down and picked up the other side at uh, 180 degrees out, I believe. And I originally designed this all holes in line, but I decided to flip the other two around 180 and that way to make it easier to tighten up on the Coventry die head. And just chasing that up with a tap. A 
All right, onto the lathe we go and I'll show you how it all fits. Now I need to buy some grub screws. However, I just had some cap head bolts and look, I'll probably leave the cap head bolts. They're probably easier to fit than grub screws. Um, and they locate underneath the, the Colchester tail sock. There's a, there's a slot, like a keyway slot to stop that the quill of that tail stop rotating and on the Coventry die head there's actually a little ground spot on this one that I can pick up the other one doesn't have one so I'll have to put a little ground flat on that one on the spare one that Wayne has and Wayne's got three of these heads all different sizes and he's got a lot of chasers and so I'm looking forward to giving these a crack I've never used one before and I'm really keen to give it a go so you can see here they lock up nice, it, um, very sturdy. Everything should be concentric and on centre height. So here I, I'll undo it now and pop in the bigger one that I've got. That Wayne has uh, loaned me for a little while to play with. Here's a big one here going in. A little bit tight to start, but give them a bit of a wobble and they pop right into place there. Good on you. Thanks for following on, and I'll see you next time.